Welcome to this Piran Film special today. We're on the road with uh, St Austin Football Club. We've travelled, what, uh, 600 miles almost, a round trip, to uh, get this special game in a very special competition, the FA Vars. This afternoon we've actually travelled to Dartford FC where uh, Greenwich Borough share the facilities with them. It's a, a marvellous stadium, which you'll see later, but uh, it's a game where St Austin, they've reached uh, the, the fourth round and their experiences, obviously, of 30 years ago or thereabouts, when uh, they reached third round, played Shortwood United, lost out very narrowly 3-2 in a replay. And uh, so you can all imagine how big this match is for the Lily Whites. They'll be out there uh, putting the pressure on a team which uh, uh, apparently are sort of controlled by a, uh, a money man wanting, has committed the club to getting into the Football League within five seasons. And so the pressure is on Greenwich Borough. The pressure will be out on the pitch early on from St Austin with manager Phil Lafferty wanting to force the game early on, keeping a high profile on the pitch and the pace of Lee and Eddie perhaps causing a danger. That's the plan. We'll see if it works after the break. Yes, many thanks to Piran Films for allowing me to uh, let you know about my recently relaunched magazine, Cornish Soccer, 24 glossy full colour edition every month featuring football in the county. This month we've got uh, a four page issue uh, feature on uh, Godolphin and the ladies behind the club, Margaret Ashwood and Tanya Simmons. We've got player profiles on uh, Geordie Dingle of St Austell and Bobby Lee John Zavarian. Plus, we've got uh, details and facts and figures on the goal scorers around the leagues in the county. And it's an essential read for everyone that loves football in the duchy. You can uh, get the Cornish Soccer by looking at uh, my website, Cornish Soccer, or the details will be on the screen. <laughs> So we're off in this uh, FA Vaz fourth round game. St Austin in the all white, uh, playing from right to left against Greenwich Borough. At, uh, in fact, if you get a little bit confused, seeing around the ground, Dartford mentioned they do share the ground with Dartford here at Prince's Park. But uh, this afternoon, it's uh, you can hear uh, a good contingency of St Austin supporters that have followed us. And uh, I'm pleased to say that alongside me, at the moment, eating a Cornish past well. Is it from Cornwall, Glyn Hooper? Totally from Cornwall, uh, courtesy of Truro School, um, yesterday afternoon. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to this. The pitch looks very heavy. So um, that's going to be an interesting factor as the game goes on, I think, at the moment. And that's Wetter with a header. Only broke his shot. You could see him slip as the ball came towards him. And it uh, is certainly wet out there on the on the surface, uh, we went out before the game and St Austin attacking it. Broke his shot with a shot, but it's blocked. And that was a very important block. Still St Austin in possession. Slateford on the ball. Got the big number three, Gary Barrowdale. Of course, one of the ex pros in the uh, Greenwich side. The man we'll be looking out for perhaps uh, more so is Gary Alexander, number eight. And uh, 
We'll get Gillian Hooper to tell you a little bit more about Alexander in a minute as St. Austell keeping possession, although uh, it's pretty much uh, hectic stuff at the moment, Glyn. Yeah, I think it's a good start from St. Austell. They've controlled the game in the first couple of minutes. Um, Alexander is obviously going to be a quality player, and, and, and I know Phil has done his homework on him. Uh, and they're going to have to look after him to, to get any result here today. The corner comes in from Jerome. Alexander gets ahead. And another shot but on the turn, well over. But uh, he's, he had a, an opening there and he took it and had a shot on goal. Phillips gets Alexander away. That's a good cross in towards Jerome, but Watts is there. Jerome's still on the ball, chips it back in. Header there from, uh, from the uh, striker coming in. And Chapman went to the post and always knew it was going wide, but uh, certainly a good effort there by Paul Vines. Um, Alexander's made a good run down the channel. Great ball into the box, which Watsy actually dealt with very well. Uh, but then they had a, a break in midfielder um, who hit the box. But on this occasion, uh, the run was followed and that was enough to put him off from uh, hitting the target. There's far too much confusion here. It's uh, St. Austo in the box, and that was uh, number eight, Ollie Brokenshaw, with that cross. And uh, we're joined now. The confusion in the box is the fact that it's a director's box. We've got Martin Gritton alongside us. Many of you will know Martin from his days at uh, numerous Cornish clubs at Argyll and Ireland and, and wherever. Martin, uh, what are you doing here then? Well, I just uh, I live up in London now, so uh, it's a rare opportunity to see the, the, the teams come up. Obviously, when Truro were playing locally, I'd get, I'd get along when I could. It's uh, great to see a team of the Vaz up in, in our neck of the woods. And we welcome you and Glyn. Yeah, what Martin said there was, it was he lives in London, and it's great to come along and support someone in the Vaz. Don't go there. But uh, Holloway with the goal kick. Let's get back to the football action. Rusky on the ball, trying to get it inside, he finds Eddie, although initially it looked as if it wasn't going to make him. Slateford on the edge of the box, looks to shoot, he does, and it's there! It's come off, I think Liam Eddie is the man who got the touch. Liam Eddie has put the visitors ahead. 14 minutes, Martin Critton, you made the difference. <laughs> well, what a strike, fantastic, it's been a bright start, isn't it? So, uh, fully deserved. And Glenn, I think there's a touch, slate for it out the shot, but I think it came off Liam Eddy. Yeah, there's certainly a deflection that's been taken in, but, you know, Liam Eddy got done well to pick the ball up, drops it off to uh, to Slates. He's hit a great strike, but the left back just dropped straight off him. Uh, never pressed him at all and, and invited the shot. Um, thoroughly deserved. Thoroughly deserved. Thoroughly deserved, although I think that really means, although if the 15 minutes gone so far have been exciting, that really means it's a game on here this afternoon. Attendance here on Wednesday for Greenwich League game is about 62, I believe. Um, I think St. Austin have doubled that attendance today, and uh, you can hear them behind the goal. They enjoyed that one. Steve Jerome, Alexander. Barry Dale, time to cross. Oh, that was the number nine, Paul Vines, but uh, it came off as St. Austin's Martin Watts, but. Superkeeper, here's a little chance here again for St. Austin. Ball just floated into the box. Slateford on the right hand side. Just looking to beat uh, the left midfielder. Just held up. And forced out further by Phillips, but Lean comes on and helps. Rusky can't quite flick it over his shoulders. But that clearance is that wasteful Greenwich there. It goes straight to Dingle using Watts. Slate through with that long ball, and he uh, broke shot, goes up. He's missed it, but the keeper keeper suggested it's a foul, but uh, you would disagree with that? I totally disagree. Yeah, I'm biased, of course I'm biased, I'm a Cornishman. Um, the keeper's come over the top of the centre forward, um, has dropped it, which you know we've spoke about, he's going to struggle. Uh, put the ball in the back of the net, and he's given the ball back, but here's a chance now. Great tackle by Watsley. Great tackle by Watsley and for Jyla, but they're still under pressure. Tens into the box. Ball's going to come in and across. Good block by Wetsy. But that, is, that should have been a goal. It's certainly uh, action packed stuff here at Prince's Park. 
see the name of Dartford above the Phillips there, but it's to own, but Alexander with a head, and that's the equal, equaliser. It's put in under the crossbar by Vines, but uh, the danger was at the near post. Alexander ran in with a, almost a free header. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great ball in the box, to be fair. He's got, he's got across him, and he's got his head. I don't know quite what happened there. It was a deflection, he's finished it on the line. It's, it's really unfortunate, particularly after, after a disallowed goal that shouldn't have been. So. That's the way these things happen, though, and it, it switched on in both boxes at all times, and uh, that's an unfortunate thing against the one to play for St. Arsenal, but um, we're going to get back in it now. So almost getting through to Eddie. Great challenge by Brekishaw, finds Slopeford, but he's blocked by Barrowdale. No, uh, could this be the first yellow card or not? Yeah, it should be. Um, he's deliberately blocked him, but what a 30 seconds. And then Sinostro put the ball in the back of the net at one end, went straight to the other end, and again, Alexander's made that near post run, and he's had a free header again. Um, and, and the rest of it was, was straightforward, to, uh, literally two yards out to put the ball in the back of the net. But, you know, they're in the game. And they're half an hour in, into it, they are majorly in this game. And uh, I think St. Austral can get stronger and stronger. And the referee uh, does show the yellow card to number three, Gary Borrowdale. His previous club, I think, was uh, Gillingham, although he didn't actually make any appearances for them. But uh, he's an ex-pro. Watts with the free kick. Now this could be interesting. What's he going to do with this one? Is he going to go for power? Watts Grit suggests he's going to hit it. And I believe that's what he should do. I wouldn't like to be in that wall, that's all I can say. That's a cracking effort. And he is there! And that's what what a way to respond. Watts powered it in. Keeper could only palm it out. And Eddie was there to snatch it into the corner of the net. 34 minutes on the clock, St. Austell 2-1 up. Well, I, I spoke about the keeper, I, I'm not sure about him, uh, you know, and it's a great strike by Watsy. Uh, nice and low, it's dipped just in front of him. He can only parry it out, and um, who else is going to be there but Liam Eddy, who has a tap in from six yards. Uh, they, they deserve to be in front, um, and I'm delighted they've got themselves back in front so early on. Come on, St. Austell. Yes, yeah, certainly that's what uh, the visiting supporters needed and wanted. They got it, Eddie's the man. But what an effort from Martin Watts. He's so deadly on those free kicks from that sort of area that uh, worth a goal. Austell have travelled 300 miles to be here and take part. But at the moment they're having to defend. It comes off Broken Shark and it's a corner. No. They conceded at the last corner, they've got to be tighter on this occasion. Chapman with a man in front of him. Cross comes in. Dear, oh dear, and Borrowdale gets the equaliser. And I have to say, say that was a bit of a shambles. They, they've, got, they've got big problems from corners. Um, I spoke about how hard they'd worked defensively but they are desperately struggling to deal with the movement in the box. Uh, six yard box, you know, I think I think Chappie's gonna be disappointed with that as a keeper. He's dropped at his feet and, he, and he's come out with his feet and they literally have had a, a, a tap in from, from again, five yards, but th that is causing them real, real problems at the moment, the corner kicks. Three goals in four minutes and it's all square again. Well, Slateford goes down, challenged by the number nine, Paul Vines. The assistant over there was immediately up with a flag. Another set piece in the St. Austin uh, penalty area. What's going to happen on this time, uh, on this occasion? Towards the edge. Oh, they've got through a lot of players before it's cleared by Dingle. Good header by Sims. Buckingside trying to get Eddie in, but uh, that's cleared by Greenwich. Tackle on, no, that's the number five, Joe Vines, on Ollie Brokenshaw. Quinn Hooper has uh, already decided for the referee, yellow card. That's a poor challenge. Um, 
knows exactly what he's doing as a centre half. Um, you know, it's one of those that you, you, you feel you can have a cheap shot, uh, go through the back of him. Uh, I'd be very surprised if this isn't the yellow card. He's certainly pulling him across, but it's people are shouting behind me. That's his first one. Well, it doesn't matter if it's first one or last one. It's a yellow card all day long. So off we go in this second half of uh, FA Vaz, fourth round, Greenwich Burr against AFC St. Austell. Cracking first half, but we can only hope the second half is anything near as good as that. Phillips on the ball for Greenwich. Vines is going outside of him, comes inside. Now he uses Paul Vines. Deep cross, which surely would go out of play, but uh, it doesn't. Alexander knocks it back in. Oh, and uh, St. Austell, you have to say, it's a uh, heart in our hands every time a cross comes in at the moment. Paul Vines with a shot, but... Uh, Still not quite looking as uh, calm and cohesive as uh, Cross comes in. It's Giles gets ahead to it and then another one. Nico James now out to Alexander. Into the box but out by Watts. Dingle gets there first. Great little ball back to Brokenshire. Now to Dingle again. This is a good break. If he can get there, he does. Now number five. Joe Vines has already had a yellow. Now, what are we going to do with this one? Dingle just touched it on. And Joe Vines could be in trouble here. He's, he's got to walk. Um, he knows exactly what he's doing as a centre half. He's stepped straight across him. Deliberate block. Um, let's see how strong the referee is. No, he's going to send him. He's going to send him and it's the right decision. Uh, Joe Vines, two yellows, so he's off now. But so often do we see a side with ten men are the better team from there on. Well, that, it, it, that's true, but if you take a key player like the centre-half, uh, strong ball-winning centre-half like, like he is, it's, uh, you know, that's random. And I, and I think the way that the way that Liam's been playing up front, the way that, uh, that Jared's got the quality they have up front, they can take advantage of that. With a key player like that going, well, I don't know quite why we got a bit of aftermath here, but um, Phil Lafferty being spoken to in front of us, literally a few feet away, and I think he's being told to go to the stand. Yeah, Phil's had a, a quiet word in the in the lads' ear as he's uh, been sent off, and uh, I think the fourth official has picked up on it. Um, I saw Gary Gary Penaligan just have a have a chat with Phil to say nothing. Phil just had a quiet little word, um, and the fourth officials picked up on it. Twenty-five minutes to go in this fourth round FA Vars game. Greenwich Borough two, St Austell two. St Austell trying to push forward, but Alexander against Wetter. They both go down, no foul. Referee does well there, not to be fooled by anyone. <laughs> Glenn Hooper is not so sure. Yeah, uh, uh, Wet's just got caught and um, Wet's done ever so well to, to get himself back in. But for me, I think, you know, Wet's he's used all his 33 years experience there. I, I thought it was probably a free kick. Um, he done ever so well to recover. What's the ball into the box, comes off James and uh, it wasn't too far away from uh, just being deflected into the roof of the net. Holloway couldn't do anything about it as uh, the St. Austell crowd there behind the goal sucked it towards the net, but not quite hitting into it. As uh... This is a pressure game now. You've got to keep the pressure upon Greenwich that they can't get out. Every time the ball goes forward, it stays forward um, because you know that Greenwich can score goals from set pieces. 
Uh, and the two up front are good players. Uh, and, and I still fancy Granin still to have it. Little chance. No, Alexander did get an arm across uh, the Sinister player who's gone down, but I, I believe that was an accident, if I'm honest. What's with the kick? Now, Wetter is straight back on with the play. Lean with a header! Yes! Bad I Oh no, it's been disallowed! It's been disallowed, a kick from Martin Watts to the far post, Dan Lean ran in from behind the, the, the back line and it's uh, disallowed and you've got to question that one. I, I, I don't know, I've got absolutely no idea why the linesman has just given that for offside. He has come from behind the play, headed it into the bottom corner and now, and now and now Greenwich are on the attack. I'm, I'm going to have a look back at the uh, replay here with Martin Exuance and uh, I'll come back to you on that one. Certainly, uh, we were all up out of our seats. Dan Lee with a brilliant header in the far corner. Now it's pressure on the Sinister defence. Jaws heads it away. Dingle over his head. Eddie to Sims to Brokenshaw. You have to say Sinister have played good football this time. Eddie, oh, he just clicked Young. Young goes down. Now that just could be St Austin's first yellow in the afternoon, I think, to a company to level it up. This next goal, though, so crucial is to, if one side gets it, could be the winner. Is uh, Greenwich with the long ball forward. Alexander against Weta. Weta wins it, but Dingle is, Dingle is fouled, which is just as well, because Lee Weta looks as if he handballed it. Dingle went down and... Uh, just uh, went to the ground under the challenge of Phillips. Yeah, right decision as well. Uh, came through the back of uh, Dingo's, but yeah, you're very, very, very right there in saying that. I think there's one more goal. I think there is one more goal in this game, and um, whilst you also got all the pressure, uh, I can't say that's going to be the way it's going to go at the moment because they are so dangerous going forward, Greenwich. The moment was Sinostal moving for Reski. Finds the gap, finds Liam Eddy. And there it is! Is that the goal that puts it also through? 12 minutes remaining on the clock. Good play by Reski. Found Liam Eddy. And with his left foot, that's his 10th goal in the FA Vars this season. What a finish. And uh, we were just saying the next goal, Glenn. Great timing. Oh, what a finish. Um, good build up play, middle of the park. Good ball put out to, to Edson. I spoke to Edson for the game today and said, attack them down the left hand side, use your left foot. Um, oh, what a finish with his left foot across the keeper into the far corner. Now they've got to look after it. They've got to continue the same way, but they've got to look after it. They've got to be really clever now in how to win the game. As immediately Greenwich come back at St Austin. We've never had, well, St Austin never had that time to uh, make the most of the lead they've had. They've got to hang on to it now. We've got uh, 10 minutes to go in this Abbey Vaz fourth round. St Austin 3 2 up here at Greenwich Borough. Eddie with a hat trick. That's his 10th goal of the FA Vaz this season, Glyn. Some finishing. Uh, well. If that's his 10th goal, you know, it is a, a great achievement so far. Wonderful, wonderful finish. You've got two centre forwards sat either side of you. And I think we both uh, stood up in appreciation. Um, Grits had a great left foot. I had a bit of a dodgy left foot. Um, but what a good finish. Although we are saying, we're not absolutely sure who got that first goal, of course, for St. Austin, are we? I mean, I'm putting it down to Eddie. Grits alongside me is saying Sweets. Glenn Hooper, you got the deciding factor on this. Slates for me all day long. <laughs> that ball in the air, but uh, Jamie Wood down the touchline. Lean is there. His clearance finds Eddie. Broken Shar. Great ball into Liam Eddie. Can he get on the end of this? He does. No, that looked as if there was a foul. He goes down, but the play comes out. Greenwich on the attack now. Weto with a header away. And uh, that ball forward by Mulready doesn't find Mancaro, but uh, 
That must have been very, very close to a penalty. Penalty for me. Um, I thought Edge was brilliant. Put his body across the defender. Um, the defender's made the challenge and he's brought him down. It's a penalty. It's a penalty for as far as I'm concerned. Him back into an onside position. Oh! There were shouts of a goal, but uh, how could they see from there? I mean, that's never a goal, was it? It's just absolutely ridiculous. To be fair, I'd be doing the same thing. We got, uh, we're in the stoppage time, four minutes I believe was what we saw the fourth official put up and uh, oh, Wetter gets a leg to it and then hits it away, Resky, very easy to say keep the ball but no, Eddie, run at them, run at them Eddie, finds Brokenshaw, finds Slate for but that first touch just held the ball up as uh, Granite's clear. Uh, I haven't got a clue what's going on, Dave, to be honest. Um, I, I didn't really see what happened from that last corner. Uh, great opportunity for Snorstall to win it. Didn't quite happen. Um, uh, I'm glad I'm sat here and not on the bench, actually. Yeah, just imagine, it's bad enough for us. Just imagine for the coaching staff down below us. Slater is just uh, limping away then from some action. Come on, referee. Holloway He's with the board. clearance. We're only into the only into the second minute of the four, but St Ulster's clock has changed. Now, Eddie, Eddie will keep possession. Then the cross to Resky. Resky brings it down. Brilliant, Brindo. Broken shot with a shot, surely. Yes. And then we got Knights. No, it's uh, blocked by the keeper. And well, there's bodies all over the place at the moment. I've got, I've got two summarisers wondering what has happened. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's an offside, but uh, we've, we've still got, we've still got uh, a forward down there in the box injured. We got uh, Resky in the middle of the park. Just uh, making sure his cramp doesn't get any worse. And we've still got at least a minute in a bit. Well, we are into the fourth minute now of stoppage time. Flipped on by Bardale. Slateford gets a touch. Ben Williams on his substitute for skipper Chris Resky. Clears it. And Carroll is in there doing his bit. So, Dan Lee with the free kick. We got Glenn Hooper alongside me, shout out instructions. He's got to remember he's not a manager anymore. Long ball forward, lean into the hands of Holly. Time is up, Williams will get his header, and there we have it. That is it, action all the way here at Princess Park. FA Vaz, fourth round match, what a terrific day. So far for St. Austin, they've ended up 3 2 winners, and Glenn and Hooper, it's just sum it all up. Cornish football, that's why we're here. Uh, we've all got our own individual clubs that we've, we've got major loyalty to, but this is about Cornwall, and that's why there's 150 people from Cornwall travelled up. Um, I'm absolutely delighted. What a day, what a day, I've thoroughly enjoyed it um, and I'm really going to look forward to the journey home.
You missed that about your best game all season. Best game all season.